Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So about a week ago, the spindle of my CNC machine went up in smokes pretty spectacularly and so I had to look for a replacement. Instead of just buying the same one again and hoping it doesn't go up in smoke again, I bought a different one and converted my sh machine. So I was just running a normal CNC operation when the spindle started to get a bit slower and slower and I wasn't paying that much attention so I didn't immediately catch it uh, until it then I stopped it but it was already too late. The spindle had stopped completely, started smoking and started smoking even more. Then I turned the power off and there was a big puff a lot of smoke, it smelled really bad and the spindle was dead. Also I couldn't turn it anymore by hand, it was like really messed up inside. So there was no hope of recovering it. Now I debated if I should wait 4 weeks for the new spindle to arrive from China or if I should get something locally. And as you will see a bit later, luckily I chose the latter option and bought just a normal router, which you normally use to finish up wood. I made sure I didn't pick one that it was too heavy as the mechanics of my CNC aren't that strong so I didn't want to put in like a 4 pound machine or even more. This one is rather light for a router, it still is a bit heavier than what I had before. It's about 500 watts which is rather low for a router, but for my needs it will be plenty. Price-wise it is about the same as I paid for the other spindle combo with the power supply. I paid just over a hundred bucks for it, which is, I guess, about average. But as it is a completely different machine, the mounting mechanism I had from my old spindle wasn't going to work. Now in the spindle from China I, there was a bracket included to mount it to my machine. So for this one I had to build one myself as this router of course isn't meant to be on a CNC. As the only option I had to manufacture such an item is my 3D printer, I whipped up a model in Fusion in just a few minutes and then printed it in ABS. Now. My printer isn't set up for ABS and I can't get my print platform hot enough that it really sticks. Now I have put on some ABS juices and tried getting it to stick but after a few layers there was immense warping and I knew it would fall off. So because I really wanted this print to finish and it didn't have to be beautiful, just it had to work. So I paused the printer and added a lot of hot glue all around the part so it really is stuck to the build plate. Now this of course looks pretty ugly and it still was warped a lot and the printer had quite a few problems until it got some height and the print went really smoothly and the finish looks good as well. Now the reason that I printed it in ABS and not PLA like I usually do is I wanted it to be really strong and this black ABS is the strongest material I had on hand. And after my little hack the print finished beautifully and I could cut it off of the build plate pretty easily and clean the build plate up with a heat gun to get the hot glue away from it. I designed this bracket so that I could use the existing bolts and screws from my old mounting mechanism. So the conversion was really simple and I had my new router bolted on there pretty quickly. So included in the box with the router was only a collet for quarter inch and six millimeters. My bigger tools are six millimeters so that's really good but I also have quite a few one eighth inch tools which I didn't have a collet for. Now there are some collets on eBay to buy for this machine but they are like 20 bucks a piece which is way mu too much for this little metal part. 
that's because it is like a really proprietary thing and not many machines use it. But I have access to a lathe, so I decided to turn my own. It was a bit tricky to get the angle just right, but after a bit of trial and error, I settled on 14.8 degrees, which then worked quite beautifully. And I was able to get this part to how I wanted. Nice enough, it also works. I can't tighten it up from hand, this, for that the material is too thick, but with some wrenches I get it nice and tight and the tool holds very well. And this new router is a lot of fun. It is way, way stronger than what I had before. Although on the spec sheet they have the same wattage. But in reality there is a night and day difference. I can run about twice as fast or twice as deep into my materials so my cycle time gets cut in half. That's really amazing as with the old spindle the cycle times were extremely long for some things. So my biggest gripe about this CMG machine just that it is really slow went away with this spindle. And the icing on the cake is that I can even cut aluminum. So I tried different feeds and speeds and I settled on rather fast feed rate but with only a really shallow cut so that the tool engages enough and isn't just smearing along. And that brings me to the one negative thing about this spindle. I can't adjust the speed at all. And the stateful speed is really high. It's around 30,000 RPM, which is okay if you're cutting just wood, but for things like aluminum, it's just too fast to be function optimally. But with some hacks like using a fast feed rate and only a shallow depth of cut, it works quite okay. And also using a, an anvil with only one or two flutes helps dramatically. So to test the machine out even more, I cut out another rack for filament as I bought quite a bit of new filament and it didn't have enough space on it. And as I already told you, the cycle time was about half of what the original cycle time was and the cuts are even cleaner. But this enormous cutting power and speed results in a big mess. On the old machine the spindle didn't have too, too much speed so there were quite big chips. But in wood with the new router the material just gets pulverized. So I really have to make a dust shoe. As if I don't go there with the vacuum and clean it up immediately, the dust is going to go everywhere in the room, which is quite annoying. So that's going to be my next project for a CNC building a dust shoe that collects the dust automatically, so that it isn't everywhere. So in conclusion, I just want to encourage you, if you build a CNC machine or anything like this, just don't buy the cheap Chinese spindles. You can buy a router for about the same price and it's going to be much better. So I guess it was a good thing that my old router went up in smokes. So I finally got the new one and it is so much better. I enjoy using my CNC machine a lot more because it's just a lot faster and I don't have to wait like an hour for just a simple part to cut out of the wood. Now the 3D printed ABS part works for now but I will have to replace it with some machined parts as the layers are starting to crack at the screws a bit which isn't going to hold up too well in the long term. But for now and to cut out some new mounting brackets it's more than enough. If you like this video and want to see more CNC videos please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe so that you get notified right away when the new ones upload. Also consider to turn on the notifications so you don't miss when one of my videos goes up and it might not go into your sub box when YouTube screws up again. So click that little bell besides the subscribe button and then you get notified right away and can be one of the first ones to watch my video. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below where I post behind the scenes footage and a lot of other fun stuff and you can also check out my website. Thanks for watching and until next time.